Hello, hello everyone and welcome to Sama Saturday. This is Sama Dog's monthly show on canine health and total well-being. And we couldn't be more excited to have all of you here. Please, first and foremost, let us know that you're here. Give us a thumbs up if you can hear us and see us okay. And uh, let us know where you're watching from. It's a beautiful part about this work and of course all of our online interactions these days is we can connect with people from all around the world. So we'd love to hear from you. And um, let me introduce our show and then we'll get right into it. So my name is Amanda Reem. I'm the founder of Sama Dog. Our topic today is all about anxiety for dogs and other animals, green humans, because we all are animals. I heard um, the beautiful um, uh, and Jane Goodall's statement yesterday or two days ago on her birthday. And I noticed the subtlety in her speech at the end when she said, Let's care for ourselves and all of the other animals. And I thought, wow, just that little bit right there helping us to remember that there's oneness between all of us. So right off the bat, I would like to share a resource to support your dog during this challenging time. Sama Dog's seven-day meditation series called Pause for Reflection is now available, and it's free, my friends. So even in a few minutes of meditation, we've seen that it's scientifically proven to have a multitude of benefits to humans, and the same benefits are available to our dogs when we practice with them. So you can sign up now and receive seven beautiful meditations and daily lessons to guide you and your furry friends towards more peaceful days and an even more profound and deep bond. So you can sign up right now at sambadog.com forward slash meditation, and at Sama, S-A-M-A, -A, like Sam. And I will put the link below, of course. So we would love to have you all there with us and guide you through this week together. So today's topic seemed especially well suited for the circumstances and the uncertainty that we are all facing right now. I was so excited and grateful for our guests today that were able to come together and to share their wisdom and their immense experience over many, many years. I mean, all together, these beings 20, 30, 40, 60, like 30 years of knowledge right here on the line. <laughs> so, um, they have these very uniquely, um, not only expansive messages, but also very spiritual, very deep and rich. So very practical as well as energetic and ethereal and, and touching into all those areas of our being and of our lives, of our animals' lives is where true healing lies. So we welcome these beautiful beings to our Sama Dog community. And I'll just briefly say, stay to share who's here on the line with us. We have Dr. Katie Kangas. Hi, Dr. Katie. Hello. Hello, my darling, who is a regular guest and a dear friend, an outstanding holistic veterinarian and the owner of the Integrative Veterinary Care Center in San Diego, California. We also have Dr. Isla Fishburn. Hi, Dr. Fishburn. Hi. Good morning. Coming in all the way from the UK. Notice the beautiful accent. <laughs> um, I'm always so envious of accents. It really just makes us sound so much more sophisticated. <laughs> so Dr. Fishburn is, it, Fishburn is one of the world's most respected voices in conservation and leading humans toward a reconnection to nature and ultimately themselves. And then our third wonderful guest is Carrie Lake an author of multiple internationally recognized books and educator on animal wellness and communication. Carrie is helping to teach all of us how to better hear what our animals are actually saying. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Carrie, for being here with us too. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> so let us all know again that you're here and just know that as we're sharing each speaker, of course, will have their time as we always do, but ask your questions, you know, if, if, while they're chatting, certainly just send them in, type them in. We will have a designated time to go through Q&A towards the end, but all throughout, just put them in there and then we'll be able to get to as many of them as we possibly can. So this is going to be a great show, friends. I'm so excited. So let's get into it. We're going to kick it off with Dr. Katie Kangas. So let me just give you a little bit more of a bio, a um, little background on her. Dr. Kangas is one of the top veterinarians in America, specializing in food as medicine as a depth that few other vets know or understand. Dr. Kangas has been practicing veterinary medicine for over 25 years, focusing solely on holistic medicine for the past 15, where she treats animal patients using dietary selections like supplements, well, using things like dietary selections, supplements, acupuncture, herbal medicine, homeopathic remedies, and essential oils. 
So, Dr. Kangas, first share with us your perspective on anxiety in animals, and what are you seeing and hearing right now from your patients? Ah, uh, thank you. And such a timely topic. I'm so thrilled to be part of this collaborative group and, you know, all the the energy and wisdom that we'll be able to share with everyone today from a holistic veterinary perspective with what I do. A couple of things to say, actually from a from a broad veterinary perspective, as far as we, you know, know in western medicine, anxiety and or stress of course affects the health so that's is very medically proven anytime we're feeling chronic stress we're having an elevation of cortisol and our dogs of course our pets do as well when cortisol elevates in the body then you get more inflammation as well and so from just a purely western medical standpoint it doesn't serve the body to live in chronic stress or anxiety because that adds to inflammation disease and a weakened immune system, which of course is very important for everybody right now to maintain as optimal immune function as possible. So addressing stress and anxiety is very important from just a pure Western conventional medical standpoint as well. Then when we get into whole body health, like what of course I like to promote with integrative care and holistic care is that obviously, you know, any of these Eastern medicine philosophies such as Chinese medicine, of course I practice Chinese medicine and um, Amanda comes from, of course, a very uh, background and depth of Ayurvedic medicine. These Eastern medical philosophies or lifestyle philosophies really also look at the whole body health, mind, body, spirit, and stress and anxiety, of course, affect the pattern of wellness and well being and everything that's going on in the body. So, you know, this is just a, a nice broad background for people to understand how, how much this really integrates to not only mind health, but physical health as well. Okay. The other interesting thing to share is that the more that I've been practicing holistic medicine for more than a decade now, I have come to an, an increasing level of awareness as to how much stress and anxiety plays a role in the health pattern of my animal patients. And another uh, nice thing to share is that I'm also becoming increasingly impressed with the level of awareness that pet parents have that stress is involved in their pet's health condition. And oftentimes they are identifying that their stress or stress going on in the household with the human family could also be playing a role in what their pet is presenting with, with a health condition. And when they come to see me, they all often uh, offer that piece of information saying, you know, I've got this going on in my life or in my household or in my family. And I really think that it is impacting my dog and these are the symptoms that are going on and that sort of thing. So it's, it's more and more people are becoming aware and I'm becoming more aware as a practitioner as how, um, you know, how important this factor is in evaluating and overall health and supporting the progression to health and better well-being. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Dr. Kangas. And please um, go ahead and, Sorry, I'm getting us all back here. <laughs> a little slow on the draw today. Um, <laughs> um, please go ahead and share with us, too, what you so beautifully do, and your knowledge is so vast in the food arena, food, supplements, um, other ways in which we can care for and provide for our animals right now that will help them with anxiety. Thank you for asking the perfect question. And you know, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people who know me will know that I, you know, the first thing I reach for is food medicine. And there's so many things we can do to support overall health, including mental health and mood support with food items. And I did, I do have a little show and tell of some food items and nutritional supplements that we can, you know, bring into the collective to support your dog and yourself for that matter. I do also, though, beyond food, get into recommendations for energetic support and things like that. And I refer a lot of my patients and clients actually to Carrie Lake, who's going to be, uh, you know, giving her uh, information soon. But uh, but I love to start with food. So thank you for asking that. And one of the things that, you know, I'll just 
say in general is obviously a, a fresh food diet and uh, the, the best quality diet is going to support the whole body health, including brain health and neurotransmitters and mood support and all that sort of stuff. So definitely diet is key. Anybody who's living on a mostly processed food diet is going to have more stressors within their body biologically, biochemically, and that's, you know, adds to the whole picture. So fresh food diet, number one, uh, and then, you know, beyond that, and of course I support raw food diets, but there's a lot of, um, you know, a lot of range between heavily processed and, and raw food. So lots of other options with cooked diets and things like that. So that's a great place to start. Then beyond that, there's several supplements that I like to recommend. And one of them that I consider to be, um, integral to add to everybody's diet is actually a trace mineral supplement. And this is generally used in the form of kelp or seaweed products. And the reason for that is that trace minerals are these minerals that the body needs in very small amounts or trace amounts, as opposed to macro minerals like calcium and phosphorus. Trace minerals are things like magnesium, selenium, zinc, uh, potassium, iodine. They are deficient in pretty much everybody's diets today, okay, human and dog, unless you're using a supplement, uh, an additional supplement. And the reason is because our soils are so depleted so that when we eat a bowl of green leaves today, we are not getting nearly the content of minerals that it should have in there. So we're turning to the sea for minerals. The important piece of this discussion in regards to anxiety is that many people may be aware of the fact that magnesium and other minerals really help the nervous system to tone down. And so when dogs or humans are feeling anxiety, um, agitation, uh, you know, discomfort uh, mentally, these trace minerals are very, very helpful. So even just putting in a kelp supplement can make a huge difference. And by the way, it's affecting all the organ systems in the body and the endocrine systems and hormonal systems too. So there's a lot of, of uh, things that that provides. So I can just show like a quick show and tell, by the way, of a powdered kelp supplement that's very easy to get um, in pet stores or online. I'm also a big fan of standard process products. So I do have their tablet that's made for people. So a lot of times people will get this for, from me for their dog and I'll tell them to share the bottle with their doggy because it's a kelp tablet. So that is one thing that I think is, is really foundational to add in. Next thing in the food category, that I would recommend is some sort of probiotic. So most people know I'm a huge fan of fermented foods in your dog's diet and your diet. Uh, anytime we are taking fermented foods or a quality probiotic, fermented food I consider to be even better than uh, a probiotic. But um, what these do is when you support your dog's or your own microbiome, you are actually indeed supporting brain health and Lo and behold, I actually just wrote an article for the Animal Wellness Magazine that should be published in their next edition, specifically on how the microbiome is affecting dogs behavior with anxiety and aggression. Okay, and there's actually studies that have been done. So I did research into numerous studies to, to write this article, but they have shown that a balanced microbiome and they've done studies in humans, mice, dogs, you know, lots of species. A balanced microbiome actually keeps you calmer because a lot of the neurotransmitters that the brain relies on for mood support and calming, such as GABA, serotonin, and dopamine, are actually manufactured by the microbes in the gut. Okay, so huge, huge, you know, gut brain uh, connection going on. So we want to support the gut, we want to support the microbiome, and we want to eat fresh food. And, uh, and take minerals and give minerals to our, to our pets. So that's the food category. And then I can make a few recommendations on some other options too with you know herbs and essential oils and, and flower essences and things like that. I don't know if, Amanda, you wanna? Yeah, sure. I think it would be great to add those in here. Let's take this question because it is on what we were just talking about with the uh, trace minerals. What can you give for trace mineral minerals if your dog is allergic to fish anything derived from the sea? Um, you know, if you, if, if 
sometimes they can be allergic to fish and not have a problem with seaweed. So I would just say don't uh, automatically assume that seaweed would be an issue if they're allergic to fish because that can be very, very different. Now, if, you feel, you know, if you've tried different kelp products and you do feel like your dog is reactive to them, there are products that you can buy that uh, just have like magnesium, you know, in a magnesium citrate form or other things where it's not a specific kelp supplement. So though those are available as well. That's probably one of the best places I would think to, or best ways to supplement in that form. Great. And can you please hold up the tub? <laughs> I yeah. think it was, um, which oh, one? was that the probiotic one? Cause that was a tub. Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah. Probably. Janet, you're probably like, well, we're not showing you the right thing. Yeah. And here, the let me zoom in here so we can see that, Dr. King. Oh, okay, sorry. My light. Dr. Mercola, complete probiotics. Yes, you got it. So that's a nice, that's one of my favorite. If if dogs, for, for recommending probiotics for dogs, this is one of my favorite because it is quite comprehensive. There's about a dozen uh, different beneficial bacterial species in here, uh, whereas a lot of probiotics have a couple. The more diversity in the microbiome, you know, generally the, the better. So uh, that is, that's one of my favorite products, but a fermented food. I mean, we understand now that one serving of a fermented food has much more uh, diversity and numbers of beneficial bacteria than a typical product. So I really like to support the fermented food use as well. Mm, that's great. That's so great. And um, Swati is asking if we can send a list of recommended products. Yes, I will get that from Katie after the show and I will post it here. And then Swati, if you'll just email us also or anyone listening that would like that directly sent, you can email connect at samadog.com and I'll give that right back to you. Oh, I'm not on the screen. You know, it's always helpful to <laughs> when people can actually see you. <laughs> I was making really good eye contact. You missed it. Um, <laughs> all right. So, Dr. Katie, yes, share with us some of the other supplements that you had up your sleeve. Okay. Sounds good. So, some of the other things that I would recommend definitely, a lot of people are probably becoming more aware of opportunities to use CBD. Okay. And maybe we can post Amanda and I have actually hosted Robin Lynn on. Sama Dog Saturdays before. And Robin Lynn is local in our area here, but she has for a long time done online uh, and phone telemed or sorry, tele uh, conferencing uh, consults with people because Robin is a CBD expert or a certified cannabis herbalist specialist. And so um, this is who I refer my clients to, to choose products for their patients or even, or sorry, for their doggies, for my patients, um, or even for themselves. Uh, and because Robin is an expert in this area, she can really help guide people to quality products that are very safe and uh, that are tailored to the needs of the individual because the market is becoming flooded with CBD. So it's very confusing for pet parents to discern what is a good product and what will work, what would have the uh, likelihood to work well for their pet. So uh, there are good resources such as Robin out there and that's why I recommend uh, CBD has many attributes to it, but definitely one of them is for mood support, calming, and anxiety. And there are a lot of pets that benefit from it for numerous reasons, from just daily stressors to you know specifics with traveling or vet visits and things like that. So that's definitely one uh, option that I would recommend if you can get a, a good resource and find a good product. So that's one. And then uh, another thing, there's a lot of different herbal products that are made actually for stress too. And this is one that's very easy to get. Let me take my light away because I think it's mm -hmm. Stress Gold Pet Wellbeing Company. They're readily available online. This is a veterinarian um, herbalist who creates these products. And uh, these are, like I said, readily available on her website. And this one particularly, as you can see on the label is for stress, but there's a full line of, of different herbal products that she makes. Um, and some of the Western herbs or even might be some Chinese herbs and things too, but valerian root, uh, there's licorice root in here, uh, skull cap, which is also very calming. So a lot of these things you'll see even in human formulas for 
relaxation or sleep and uh, you know, so you can rest better at night. So this is a really nice option and it can be given, you know, as needed or regularly. It's labeled for twice a day with, you know, uh, dosing guidelines right on the bottle. So that's a nice herbal option or things that are similar. And then kind of last category that I would uh, bring up here today would be things that are more uh, aroma based, such as essential oils and or flower essences. And again, Amanda and I have had uh, Meg Harrison, the Blackwing Farms, uh, line on our programs before too. And she is fantastic. I do carry a lot of her uh, formulas in my practice. This one's called Drama Trauma. Um, this one is Calm. So these Blackwing Farms uh, sprays are a blend of essential oils, flower essences, and homeopathy. And I have found these to be more effective as a general rule than lots of other uh, products similar to this that I've used before. And I think not only Meg's expertise is amazing in formulating these uh, products, but also because she blends several different uh, modalities in, you know, in one product, which I love. And then there's just, you know, different essential oils that can be used. Uh, Young Living has Valor, which is, you know, kind of uh, courage and, and calming and grounding. Doterra has balance. Uh, and then Dr. Melissa Shelton, actually, I should have brought some of her oils. Animal EO mm -hmm. is another brand of oils and she'll have a lot of wonderful options as well. So. Mm, awesome, Dr. Kangas, that is exactly what we needed. So many people have reached out to me and I'm sure all of us on the line and all the practitioners to ask some of these specific questions. So you have just answered all of them. <laughs> That's so, so helpful. Um, I wanna recognize and say hello to some of our viewers also, our online community. We've got people coming in from all over the place. Thank you guys so much, first of all, for being here. If you're willing, you obviously see that this is good information. I know I have a slightly biased opinion, because it's <laughs> but isn't it good? I mean, really, right? so please help us in getting this out there in the world. I mean, so many people can't access a vet. Obviously, we're all in our homes and we're not supposed to go out. So our animals, in many cases, are suffering too. And how do we help them? So this gets this right into their home. So right now, if you'll just go down to the bottom of your screen, press that share button, it will help us so much to share this wisdom. The whole, you know, the whole of us, our whole collective community is what makes this difference in the world. So we have people coming in from all over the place. As I said, we even have someone coming in for, from Spain, someone from Italy. We've got the cutest comment I've read yet is this one right here. Dr. Kangaroo, where is your office? <laughs> That's cute because I have been nicknamed Katie Kangaroo before. So yeah. But I bet, I bet. So Jenny is then apologizing because her voice to text did not get that right. But um, it's great because our, our group is helping each other here. Someone else gave them your exact address information. So oh, thank fantastic. you. Thank and you. I can add in that I am doing, of course, everyone is now with everything going on with COVID, but I'm doing a lot of telemedicine and veterinarians are actually allowed right now to prescribe medications via telemedicine because of everything going on. So it works very, very well in a holistic setting because of the type of approach we're taking. Mm -hmm. You know, the discussion means a lot more than even just the physical examination oftentimes. So it's, it's the perfect match for what's going on now. But I love to be able to broaden my scope of being able to help people through telemedicine as well. Awesome. Awesome. And hello to Marlene and Luana from Minnesota, Luana, and from South Florida, Marlene. So yes, let us know if you guys are tuning in. And um, I will come back to some of these questions a bit later. Uh, can you put Robin Lynn's information in? Definitely. We'll give you guys as many resources. And like I said, at any time, just email me, connect at samadog.com, and I'll share anything and everything you want. So we are moving on now to Dr. Isla Fishburn. Dr. Fishburn has a bachelor's of science in zoology and a master's and a PhD in conservation biology. Isla is passionate about conservation, ecosystem health, and reconnecting people to nature, where Isla believes true healing begins. So is Amanda. <laughs> <laughs> She is the owner of Kachina Canine, 
a company that focuses on canine wellness, health, and longevity. She offers education in person and online, including an extensive and totally unique online course that you can learn more about on her website. So Dr. Fishburne, thank you, first of all, for being with us. And will you please share with us your thoughts on this global crisis, all that's happening in the world, and how the anxiety is affecting our animals? Yeah, so morning, morning, beautiful people to start with. And um, I really want to start with right now, what, I'm, what I've been tapping into for the past couple of days is... Um, almost like a collective feeling of people feeling really drained right now. And that's because of the um, the situation that we find ourselves in this current climate, that for many of us, there has been panic and fear and anxiety and just, you know, the, 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 the fear of the unknown. And so um, we've kind of been operating from our adrenals. We've been operating with an elevated nervous system that has kept us in this survival safety response. And so what is now happening uh, for us humans is so many of us are, are feeling maybe not our own um, depletion or our own lack of, of, of energy, but just as a collective right now of picking up on just everyone's now crashing. So I want us to first and foremost, just be aware of that. Um, if you are feeling, um, and not really for, for any particular reason why, but just right now you're kind of feeling, wow, I feel a little bit more exhausted than normal. I feel really um, just fatigued or jaded. The, as a collective, as a, as a human race, the adrenals have kind of crashed now. We've gone into like adrenal fatigue. So I just kind of want people to be aware of that and to feel within your body. Um, yeah, just to if if that if that sensation of being drained has come in, that's really what's happening. It could be your own um, adrenal fatigue, or it can be, as I said, the collective. For me, I've been aware for the past couple of days, and it's not mine. I'm going to talk about excitement in a moment. Uh, it's definitely not mine. Um, but I'm just aware of this. Like, wow, my my energy field, my energy state just feels really depleted because of the collective. Right now, we kind of are in this crash of kind of living in survival, and that's kind of what anxiety can create and anxiety can bring in so I wanted to kind of make that point because regardless or even before um, we were brought into this kind of collective um, community of the pandemic what is happening from my perspective is that I want us to kind of take a step back and understand what we are as um, a species as a being and what our dogs are and what all other animals are as as beings and we are this beautiful vessel of energy um, that needs to flow and needs to have the correct factors and gateways and pathways to allow our vessel to flow powerfully and fully and what can happen on the other side of that and the other polarity is where anxiety and fears can come through. That I'm going to explain a little bit more in a moment. But what I want us to understand is that first and foremost, um, we are all genetically ancient beings. Our dogs are a, a partly a domestic animal. We are a domestic animal. But first and foremost, we are all genetically ancient beings that live in a modern day world. And unfortunately, our beings, our energy state, our vibration operates at a pace, operates at a at a momentum that is much more um, slower and steadier and calmer than what our um, beings are placed into and what our soul parts are placed into and what our physical and emotional and mental parts are placed into that creates a nervous system arousal. So unfortunately, when we look at it from a wellness perspective and a, and a holistic perspective, our entire ecosystem and um, my whole being, our dog's whole being, is kept in a prolonged state or constant state, state of sympathetic activation, just simply that part of the nervous system that is constantly on overdrive without enough rest and relaxation before the next stressor comes. And that's really important right now, because even before we had the pandemic, so many um, ecosystems of not just the human guardian, but also the dog was in this constant state of prolonged state of this activation without enough rest. And so when we talk about it from an energy state perspective, when we talk about, wow, um, you know, my dog's got low health. Or I kind of right now we've got these crashes. I feel low in health then all we mean is that we feel low in energy. So lowered health is low energy, it's low frequency. So when we look at it from a vibration perspective and an energy state perspective um, that we are, then um, our energy is being depleted. So what can we do to safeguard ourselves and to create a re robust ecosystem for ourselves, but also a robust ecosystem for our dog? And um, because we we are we are all 
interconnected we are all a, all a collective and that's really something that i want to point out again that's really been addressed in terms of our nervous system that we only have a couple of defense mechanisms uh, we have our nervous system and our immune system now when the nervous system is aroused the nervous system will trump the immune system so the best way to think about it is if we are in africa on safari and we're not very well at the moment we have dysentery and you know we have sickness and diarrhea we're not feeling very well our immune system's kicking and our immune system is really trying to fight um this this infection but then all of a sudden we hear like the deepest darkest rumble and growl of a lion all of a sudden our immune system is switched off our nervous system is activated because our survival is a priority so we need to run and get away from that threat and that danger so the nervous system will and does always override the immune system so when we are operating from a, a place in a state where um our our vibration is heightened so we're not uh, aligned with our true self then that creates all manner of physiological distresses and also stress entire in, in its entirety within the ecosystem so for me arousal is arousal stress is stress because an, a nervous system distress is going to create digestive system distress immune system distress physiological distress and 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 it just goes on and on and on um and so with that what i want us to really have an understanding of right now um is when we operate from the place of anxiety there's there's a beautiful concept called entrainment which is what i love talking about it's to do with oscillation and, and vibrational state and vibrational resonance so the best way to explain it is um someone that owns a clock shop the clock in that and the clocks in that shop the clock that has the biggest pendulum the biggest swing actually encourages and influences all the other pendulums to swing in unison and when we think about ourselves when we think about what our pendulum is it's our heart it's our heart rate our heartbeat so simply through our own um thoughts our own words our own vibrational processes as a human being that lives and coexists so beautifully and closely with our dogs um, our own vibrational pace, our own vibrational resonance can actually influence and does influence and affect our dog's energy state, which therefore affects our dog's wellness and our dog as an ecosystem and our dog as a whole e as a whole ecosystem and a whole system. So it's a beautiful process called called entrainment. Within that comes the the um, this amazing subject of DNA consciousness, where DNA itself DNA itself emits a vibration. DNA itself is communicating um, a very, very, very subtle frequency to one another. Um, and this is, again, something that I find fascinating and I want people to understand of um, in the 1960s. So the U.S. Army did it. And I actually don't remember why. But in the 1960s, the U.S. Army took um, DNA swabs from people from the saliva of people. And they put those swabs in like a, a microscope and the people that um, were in the lab were sent hundreds of miles away to another location and they were shown different pictures and film and footage that would evoke and, and invite different emotional states, happiness, sadness, worry, fear, um, anger. And as these different emotional responses were being shown in the human, their DNA that was in the lab was also responding exactly the same like mind blowing right yeah. but amazing because when we think about it from a wellness perspective when we are with our dogs even when we are if we're able to go out to work right now um we are like loving our dogs bye have a great day um we're stroking our dogs we are leaving our consciousness our dna consciousness on our dogs and so what can also interfere and affect our dog's energy state as well as ourselves is the words that we speak and and what we think and uh one of my one of uh, one of my teachers one of my coaches has um it's not his saying but this came from him of um the mind is a powerful servant but a cruel master and mm -hmm. so when we look at it from what is on the other side of anxiety which is what i want to talk about is because we are just a vessel of vibration we are all just a vibrational being that this energy needs to flow. And what's on the other side of anxiety is excitement. It's curiosity. It's wonder. It's like, wow, what can I learn in, in this world? What am I here to create? Um, and so how we can 
flip the coin and flip from anxiety, which can affect ourselves, but for the negative, it can affect our dogs and how we can operate from a place of excitement. And when we operate from a place of excitement, it actually brings our being into natural alignment because there we are operating from pure love. We're operating from our true self. We're operating from a place um, where vibrationally we have so much certainty in our own being that that supports our dog's energy state as well. So what is proven is that what follows thought and what follows the words that we speak is an energy. So even if we are not using words directly to our dog, but it might be a dog that is um, in an atmosphere where there's tension. Maybe it's getting a little bit um, intense, like living with the family so close right now. We're getting a little bit tetchy, a little bit irritable, a little bit angry. And maybe we use words that we wouldn't normally. Then they still hold an energy. That's why words, when put them together, is called uh, 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 a spelling. When we spell our words, it is a spell. Um, so they have magic and potency in our words and also in our thought. And this is why when we look at it from... Um, a whole ecosystem approach. We are not separate from anything within our body, but also without. What is within is also without. So our energetic states and our vibration um, can affect our dogs and do affect our dogs as well. So what we can do within ourselves is these beautiful daily practices because energy is changing all the time. So that's one thing that, that we have to have an awareness of and accept. So I kind of get people to understand with this concept of imagine how we feel when someone walks through the door who we absolutely love, who's closely followed behind somebody who we absolutely hate. Yeah, we're like, oh, gee. oh, I don't know, you were behind them. <laughs> That's instantly a change in energy right there. So our energy states are changing all the time. And this is why when I talk about vibrational health, when we talk about cellular health, it should be no different between, you know, we wash our face every day, we clean our teeth every day. This is a practice that we should bring into our daily lives to support ourselves, but also to support our dog um, so that we create this vibrational alignment. And there's so, so many things that we can do. I work with particular ones that kind of um, align with me and get me excited and passionate and that really uh, I resonate with. Um, but from that, what we are trying to achieve is remembering and reminding of where in the body uh, we should operate and live from, which isn't the mind. The mind is a, a beautiful servant. It's a tool. It's a resource that we can use to help us um, develop and grow and evolve and to learn, which is very, very powerful and very needed. But when we actually sink back into where in the body, like how do I feel in the body? Um, how do I trust? How do I shift out of this vibrational flow of anxiety because we are this vibrating vessel and move into a place of excitement and that also creates clarity uh, and this alignment as well so i absolutely agree in terms of what's already been talked about in terms of um, homeopathic remedies flower essences and essential oils and two other ones that i'm going to add on top of that that i find just just for grounding that can work really beautifully on humans and also dogs as well and I do say dogs because for me I'm I'm all about canines um as a zoologist I should know about all of the animals um but from a wellness perspective I'm I'm looking at the canines um sandalwood is a beautiful one just it's, it's very grounding very very beautiful and grounding is obviously from from the wood um but just be careful where you get it from because there is a conservation status with sandalwood and also nutmeg nutmeg is can be really helpful where there is kind of scattered and erratic, erratic energy and that is also very grounding as well and one of the things that I would say is um something that I do daily and get my clients to do is just what's called a self-check-in just really feel into your body are you stuck up in your mind and if so how do we come out of our mind and and um, sit back into our heart how do you feel today how might that affect your dog and um yeah, so a self-check-in and being present, being absolutely present and absolutely aware. And one of the, the beautiful things that I get a lot of good results with, uh, which is very grounding, which replicates and mimics uh, the um, the natural beat of Mother Earth, is um, indigenous drumming. So that's one of the tools that you I would certainly encourage you to do that. Again, you can be sat at home doing with your dog. You don't have to have a drum because there's there's plenty of resources online and there's a particular one that, that, that I follow as well. Um, but that again is a way that can really bring our body back into natural alignment, support our dogs. And also there's a few studies that actually show how indigenous drumming supports the immune system. I mean, it strengthens the immune system. Um, so it's, 
understanding that first and foremost we are genetically ancient beings that live in a modern day world that our because of that our ecosystem states our nervous system our our whole system is already in this constant state of prolonged state of activation without enough rest so really important to bring these opportunities of rest and relaxation in um we are operating looking at cellular health for our dogs their vibrational health that we can we can knock out an effect through our own thoughts our own words through entrainment um and again how we can look at understanding like anxiety is something that is shaped from um stories and and circumstances and events that make us believe when we are kind of operating from the mind that there, that there is there is fear when actually when we sink back into our hearts when we come back into a place of operating from our heart then the other side and the opposite side of anxiety that allows our energy to flow and our energy to flow correctly is the excitement and the wonder and um, that comes from from pure love mm. yeah Hmm. Wow, Dr. Isla, that was beautiful. So well said. And it's fascinating to hear like the science science behind the emotions. Yeah. Um, yeah, thank you for sharing that with us. Thank you. Thank you. So we have a couple comments here. I think it's a cute Lisa from Spain, also from the Northeast England, like Dr. Isla. I'm pretty sure just caused our dog to have a nervous stomach for a week. We need to sort out our vibration. So Lisa, um, Isla just shared such a great explanation of that, but I did want to share your comment. <laughs> uh, Janet says, how do you use the nutmeg and sandalwood? Oh, oh, hi, Janet. Um, uh, yeah, Janet's a friend of, well, yeah. Uh, so um, Janet, module four of the online course um, <laughs> so, uh, sandalwood and nutmeg uh, with the essential oil so the way that i work with essential oils so one of the things when we look at canine wellness uh, i'm a really big fan of any animal including ourselves but any animal to have free will so free will is hugely important um, and that then crosses like the barrier of choice so our animals should have choice as we should as well so when I work with essential oils for, from my perspective it is all based on choice if the animal wants it or the animal doesn't want it and um, so um, I have a bottle of essential oil and simply we um, so for some dogs it can be taking the um, lid, like taking the lid off can be just too strong for them so for some dogs you might just simply have to keep the unscrew the lid but keep it on uh, Hang on, I have a prop. Let me get it. <laughs> I like the show and tell effect of this show. I know, show and tell. It's my little doorstop. <laughs> okay, so um, we ascended the, the little, 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 little Scotty dog. Um, and then you, you're not shoving it right under the dog's nose, but you're because we know how powerful the dog's ability to smell is. So we're just waiting for the dog to have um an interest in smelling that that scent from the essential oil and basically seeing what the dog does so i mean essential oil is a huge topic in itself for me because they are potentially a, a toxin and a poison if they're not used correctly uh, and there is a difference in potency of it being one animal's medicine and one animal's toxin one animal's poison but so long as we are giving the dog a choice and norm normally so in my experience i mean i've done this oh i've worked with dogs and essential oils for a and there's many dogs now um from from my perspective i would say 93 to 94 percent of the time a dog just wants to inhale an essential oil um three percent of the time i would say a dog wants to roll in an essential oil never make make sure they do not roll around their like get it in their eyes or anything and um two two percent of the time a dog may want to lick it and it is it's just a lick they're not wanting to gulp the essential oil because this is like the this is described as the seat of the soul of the plant which i absolutely love um so normally a dog will just want to sniff it and again depending on the dog as an individual this is an individual approach and um, some dogs will want to be really close some dogs will want to be further away sometimes you might find a dog will sniff it and actually walk away and lie down that is still working within the dog's body because Although from a, from a scientific perspective, there is a biochemistry that we can look at to understand how it works in the body and how it's having an effect. But there's also an energy. So for me, yes, as a scientist, it's biochemistry speaking to biochemistry, but it's also spirit speaking to spirit, mm. um, which is why I love working with essential oils so much. Um, and then what we're looking for is just positive responses, which which is really vast. It can be anything from a dog yawning to a dog um, like 
the dog will stick its tongue out to trap the, the particles of the essential oil, so the gas particles, the gas molecules that have now been released in the essential oil. Um, some dogs will some dogs will like just go into a trance. Some dogs will blink. Some dogs will close their eyes really, really tightly. And, and it is kind of a subject in itself. And I would really, on this call, just go for like only offer the essential oil and allow your dog to inhale it because the concept of putting it onto the body or the dog licking is... Um, a little bit more detail just because again it can be um uh it isn't always going to be a dog's medicine basically um but that's that's how i would do it to get started yeah mm, so great thank you so much for that wealth of information um yeah so so well said so inspiring and really gave us some landing points to come back to and that's what we hoped with this conversation and i know carrie in just a moment now we'll do that as well and Katie certainly did too. Like, give us some real tangible items that we can take into our life today to help our family. So, thank you so much for that, Dr. Fishburne. All right. So, now we're going to move on over. Let me just take that out there. You know, it's hard to do all the things at one time. Um, <laughs> so, let's come over to Carrie Lake, the dear author and internationally known animal wellness expert with a special focus on soul connection to animals and with a specialty in working with horses. Starting at around 11 years old, Carrie became, uh, began studying the differences between the ways animals communicate and how humans communicate. She learned by tracking the feelings in her body because at that age, she didn't have any vocabulary for it and the animal didn't care about the vocabulary anyway. Today, Carrie shares simple tools of awareness building between animals and humans via her books, her classes, and consultations with loving but challenged pet parents. Many of Carrie's resources are available online, so check that out, carrielake.com. Again, I'll put everything up, including her brand new course called Tools for Life with Companion Animals. So Carrie, thank you again for being here with us and for guiding us through what you're going to. So first, Carrie, please tell us a little bit more about your work and help us to understand anxiety from the animal side of things. Oh, thank you so much. And like like Isla and Katie said, it's such an honor to be here with all of you. Thank you so much for, for everything. And thank you for everybody who's on the line with us. Mm -hmm. um, the... The biggest thing that I would love to share in, in this forum, um, especially with the uh, global environment, societal environment, is anxiety is not the enemy. Anxiety is not an enemy to attack. In fact, if he, as a human, we get it into our mind that anxiety is bad and I have to do something about it because it's hurting this and damaging that, well, you've actually just re-empowered the anxiety. One of the greatest ways to interrupt the cycle of anxiety, very, very pragmatic, is literally take a five second break from your opinion about anxiety and simply give it permission to exist because it is clearly existing. The moment that you, you take a break from attacking anxiety, you're gonna start to notice a shift in your body because like, like Dr. Isla was saying, thoughts are vibrational. The body is affected by frequency and it doesn't have to be necessarily a big uh, practice or a big meditation to shift the frequency in your body, which is going to shift how your chemistry works, which is going to shift the frequency that you emanate just as communication as a living being you'll feel the difference in your own body and to be sure the animals around you feel the shift in you as well. It's, it's a very empowering perspective to take a little break from your opinion and then watch the change in your body. It's quantum, it's, uh, it's physical, it's pragmatic, it's spiritual all at the same time and it's profoundly simple. Everything that I share has uh, has been built from a foundation of, as Amanda introduced, it's from a foundation of my own experience being a sensitive kid, standing next to animals, and how different that felt from standing next to people. Because we all know that somebody coming in, you know, in a wonky headspace can have an effect on, on how it feels to be me. So 
in watching my own body change when somebody's sad, when somebody's happy, when somebody's nervous, it started to build a sensory vocabulary. And again, it didn't necessarily come in words, it just comes in awareness and being able to notice, hmm, something just changed, hmm, something just changed, hmm, something just changed, without calling it good or bad, right and wrong, right? Anxiety is simply an experience until we give an opinion that it's bad. Anxiety is our collective system giving us information. And it's un it, until we decide it's good or bad, it's simply information that can actually help us navigate the situation. So when anxiety gets really high, a lot of times, and again, the perspectives I'm sharing here, I'm my favorite perspectives are the ones that are simple enough so that we can do something about it. So just so you know, that's where I'm coming from with this. So often when humans are experiencing anxiety and our, our nervous system and our, our endocrine systems are off the charts, often what's happening is we are sensing an overabundance of information that is either being misinterpreted or we just don't know how to handle it. Too much sensory input, too many thoughts, too many people around us, too many um, memories uh, of emotions or, or just too many emotions. When there's an overabundance of sensory information, vibrational information, an overabundance of experience, that our mind doesn't know how to handle by itself. We have a built-in ally that can take us immediately right back to what we know as the present moment. And I love this. Again, it's because it's profoundly simple and it's the animals that taught me this. If you look at it, your body, how often is your body in the future? How often is your body in the past? How often is your dog's body in the future? How often is your kitty cat's or your horse's body in the past, right? Our physical body is the aspect of us that is always and perpetually in this beautiful place, this beautiful harmonious place called the present moment. And the animals, because they have a different consciousness than humans, the animals are not in the same state of generating opinions about what they sense. They're not in a, in a state of empowering anxiety by saying, oh my God, this is terrible. I, I shouldn't be licking my paws. You know, They're, they are simply expressing, here's how it feels to be me. I'm licking my paws to soothe myself because there's a lot of energetic information and I don't know what to do with it. You know, animals who are living in, in among animal families, when they have anxiety, they'll wrestle, they'll play, they'll run, they'll do what it takes to feel alive in their body again. And humans, because we have this thinker, we often try to think our way out of anxiety. And I'd like to give you a, a, a very, kindergarten simple very pragmatic tool that you can use 10 seconds at a time when you notice that you are in the experience of anxiety when you notice your own body going ay, 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 or you know however it is for you i mean anxiety is as unique as every individual on the planet but but the truth of it still is each of our bodies is here in the present moment right in the same place as as our animals and so this tool is um, developed into human language, but is born of my connection with animals, with horses. And it's a tool that generates harmony just simply because you can. It's already built in your system. The tool is called Mind Watch the Body. Very simple. And I'm just going to ask you to play along with me for a moment. Let, let yourself have this experience as I walk us through it. Let it be this simple. And then in five minutes or so, you're welcome to complicate things again. But just 
for the fun of the experience. I wonder, I wonder how it feels to be me if I let it be this simple. And let yourself ask, ask yourself that question, okay? And mind watch the body gives the mind a job that actually honors the heart, honors the body, and even honors the mind. Here's how we wanna play with this. Let your awareness go to your wrist, pick a wrist. And if you don't have a wrist, pick an ankle or a shoulder. R the wrist is generally pretty easy, but without excluding what you hear or what you see, let your awareness just travel down into your body. Let's not give this a label like mindfulness or meditation. Let's just say, hey, mind, go watch the wrist. And let, let yourself pretend if you need to. Pretend you're a master. Take your awareness right to the in, good job inside of your wrist. And then watch the sensations of your wrist. Watch your wrist communicate to you. Oh, yeah, I feel that. And let's let it be that simple for just 10 seconds. I'll count the seconds. Just for 10 seconds, give your mind the job of making your wrist a priority. Just for 10 seconds. Just to see how it feels to be you when you do that. And just play with it. Maybe six more seconds. There's not a correctness. This is simply giving the mind the job of watching the body. Beautiful. Now, without abandoning that, just notice for yourself, what, if anything, feels different in my body? Is something the same or is something different? And just notice. What you're doing is taking command of your mind, the part that wants to run off into anxiety, the part that gets hooked in anxiety, and you're giving it an appropriate job that brings it into connection, not only with your heart and your own body, but also into connection with the animal kingdom. When humans go into anxiety, a general way to say, to talk about how animals experience that is they experience disconnect. Humans go into anxiety, we go into our head, we go into processing. And if you are a dog or a cat, it's like, well, where did my people go? Where did the connection go? And the absence of connection from the heart produces the same experience that we call anxiety. We are all built to be connected to be aware of the experience of connection. And so even as I'm speaking now, let your awareness go maybe to your other wrist or your other hand. Watch how your body provides a sensation that says, oh, I feel you there. Your awareness is one of the most profound powers on the planet. You take your awareness into your own body, your own body activates and you will feel it in the form of a change. Some people feel tingles. Some people um, feel a relaxation and expansion. Some people feel heat. Some people, people feel pressure. What I'd love for you to explore is the simplicity of this. I'm totally with Dr. Isla and all of us <clears throat> of how grateful I am that People who do science can now ask the questions to prove these things. But the truth of it is that science is trying to prove what is uh, observably true when you bring your awareness to your body. <clears throat> the more you give yourself 10 seconds at a time. So again, even while I'm talking, maybe take your awareness to both hands. Let yourself be aware of the existence of your hands. Notice you can still hear. Notice you can still see. Notice you still understand. But watch how your body responds to you and says, oh yeah, that's changing. Nice to see you. The more you can 
very simply bring your awareness to your body, your body responds, your mind gets used to that and starts to look for that. And then you can say, okay, mind, go to the heart center. Heart center open. And watch how your body provides you a change. It provides you a change in your experience. And you can give yourself literally just 10 seconds. If it's a really high anxiety day, promise yourself after 10 seconds, you can go back to freaking out if you need to, but just a 10 second break changes your chemistry. You may not want to go back to freaking out. You may want to take another 10 seconds while you go get stuff done. Hmm. So play with this, even while we finish up, even as we open to questions, even as we, we finish up our time together here. And watch how you taking command of your awareness has a profound effect on your presence as you bring yourself much closer to the heart space where animals live all the time. Again, it's a, it's a profoundly simple approach to some universally complex practices and, and ancient uh, knowledge and what is uh, quantumly provable scientifically now. It all comes down to your awareness with your body and will you provide yourself the experience because your presence is what generates the greatest harmony just like the clock with the biggest pendulum come into your heart experience that presence through your heart and watch your animals start yawning and look to come lay down next to you because that's what they've been looking for too mm. wow thank you carrie so much it's beautiful, and and I think it's such an important reminder now more than ever, maybe, of the effect that our own mood and state of mind and state of wellness is having that influence on our animals around us. I think maybe for, for many of us, we're more aware than ever before of how intricately woven together our animals are into our lives, how much they're influencing us on the day-to-day. Um, I saw many people being home, and I know I've spoken to many people, and you guys probably have too, that are struggling with their animals acting in weird ways. And, you know, animals, especially dogs, love routine. They love consistency. They love to know what they can count on. And this is so different for them. So all of you did a beautiful job in presenting such great tangible information and right along with the reminder that we taking care of our own selves is probably the number one thing that we can do for our animals. I totally agree. And you know, I just, it's so natural for people to say, oh, I can see my pet is suffering. I want to help my pet. But mm -hmm. really, truly the first thing, one of the greatest things that you can do when you see your animal having a hard time physically, mentally, emotionally, even spiritually, is bring your awareness back to your own heart. Feel the love moving through your own heart, how much you love them. It's a very different frequency than worrying about them. And when it's the foundation of how can I really help? I'm gonna come back to my own heart and then I'm gonna take action. And you know, it's, it's profound when you're committed to operating that way the the amazing benevolent force your presence is in every situation mm, i love that such a great great reminder um any of you that have any questions please let us know we have just a few minutes but we do want to grab and give you know a chance to answer those grab those from you and, and help you to get all of that information that you have come here to gather so don't hesitate just type it in there but it's wonderful to hear and from so many of you in your comments. This is so wonderful. Mm -hmm. I already feel that overwhelming feeling of calmness and relaxation. Thank you. Oh, Marlene, you two are so cute in your little picture there. And then <laughs> Kate is always on with us and putting up such great um, little summaries. You guys that are watching the comments, you see them. You know, great group session today. Thank you all so very much. Thank you, Kate. She's always great at you know helping us to kind of land those points as all of us are speaking them. So many others on the line with us. Our community really enjoyed this session. I think we had one of our higher attendances ever because of this 
necessary conversation and you all delivered it so beautifully deep from your heart so thank you thank you and thank you and thank you all so very much as well for being part of our community for caring enough to stay on a conversation for an hour on behalf of your animals and yourself that says a lot about who you are as a companion to them so thank you for being that light in this world one final reminder also about our um, Sama Dogs Pause for Reflection, the seven-day meditation series, another resource that all of you can access right now, samadog.com forward slash meditation. Seven days free to all of you, and I hope you really enjoy that. We put our heart and soul into that work. And um, lastly, our next Sama Saturday is May 2nd. So we do the first Saturday of every month. So the next time we come together, May 2nd, on the topic of Ayurveda. So anyone that's newer to that conversation or older into that conversation, I know you'll get a lot out of that session as well. So thank you all, Dr. Isla, Dr. Kangas, Carrie, Dr. Carrie. We're just going <laughs> to <laughs> thank you so much for your heart and your spirit in this world. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you. Thank, thank you for you. having me. It's been great. Thank all you. All right, everyone. We will look forward to seeing you all next time. Many blessings to all of you. Please stay well. Many blessings. Much love. Mm -hmm.